So let me turn everything over to Heather Ventura from Oracle and talk about how you guys can participate in future of Java. Heather. Okay, thank you, Frank. Thanks for having me. Um, happy to be here. So my talk today, I'm going to give you a 30-minute introduction to the JCP and Adopt the JSR program and how you can participate. So has anybody here heard of the JCP? Okay. And what about Adopt the JSR? Okay. Ask Frank before the meeting started if we talked about Adopt the JSR before in your Java user group, and he said you had but a while back. So it's good that I'm here to share with you. So I'll talk first. Um, about the JCP a little bit. Since most of you have heard of the JCP, I won't spend too much time on that. And that's kind of what I expected as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about Adopt the JSR and some of the JSRs that are being developed currently through the JCP. So the JCP is the mechanism for developing Java specifications. It's developed by the community for the community. So we, with uh, the JCP, we have JSRs, obviously, and every JSR has reference implementation and also a test um, compat technology compatibility kit. So that's the test suite that you use to test your implementations against the spec to see if you have compatible implementations. So that's what the JCP is all about. And right now we have about 800 members. Um, three quarters of those are individuals, but we also have other ways that you can participate, which I'll talk about later. And we have 377 is the exact number of JSRs currently developed through the JCP. About 40 of those are active right now. Um, and about two thirds of those have reached final stages, but a, a lot of technologies that you use as a Java developer are developed through the JCP, so our most recent platform releases I've listed here for you. So in 2013, we had the major update to Java EE, Java EE 7, and as Frank mentioned just a minute ago when he was asking you if you're, what version of Java you're using, we had the newest version of Java SE, Java 8, released in March of last year, so about a year ago, which was a revolutionary release of Java and has had tremendous adoption. I know only a couple people raised their hand to have um, production versions of Java 8 yet, but a lot of uptake in terms of people trying out the technology and being excited about some of the JSRs that were developed to be part of Java 8, such as Lambdas and the new date and time API. So that's great news. And we also had an update to Java ME. I don't know if there's any Java ME or embedded developers in the audience here. Do we have any? One or two. OK, so good news for you as well. Also, last year in 2014, we celebrated 15 years of the JCP. So. We continue to evolve the JCP program in order to meet the needs of developers by both evolving the technology as well as evolving the ways that you can participate. So some of these programs like Adopt a JSR have started later in the process, about three years ago, as ways that you can participate and get more involved as an individual Java developer. So you can participate as an individual developer or you can participate um, as a member. Uh, so we have observers that anyone can do as a developer you're you're welcome to observe any of the work in the JCP you can also join as a member in the JCP and this gives you certain rights um, such as nominating yourself to serve on an expert group so every JSR has an expert group if you're a member of the JCP you are eligible to serve as an expert group member on any of the JSRs and you can also lead a JSR as a member of the JCP so you can become a spec lead and the JCP also has a governing board called the Executive Committee. And if you are a member every year in the fall time frame, we have Executive Committee elections. So you're eligible to nominate yourself to serve on the Executive Committee, either as a member of your corporation, your employer that you work for, or as an individual, or as a Java user group. So right now we have two Java user groups who are serving on our Executive Committee. Uh, we have the London Java community as well as SoJava, which is a large Java user group in Brazil. And we have a couple of individuals um, as well as some corporations and open source groups uh, such as the Eclipse Foundation on the executive committee. Those are our levels of participation. And as I mentioned, uh, we've evolved ourselves over time and currently the JCP is now more open than it ever was before. This is current, the current status of JSRs developed through the JCP are um, updated uh, regularly, kept current, they have a current schedule, they have a wiki, they have public discussion forums versus uh, closed 
uh, members only uh, discussion forums for the work of the JSRs that are developed through the JCP. And each JSR also has a public issue tracker. And all JSRs are voted on by the executive committee three times throughout the life cycle of the JSR. And again, three open public reviews. So even as a public observer, if you're not a member of the JCP, you have access to all of this information for every JSR. You can access the, the drafts that are published at least three times throughout the life cycle of the JSR. You can read and comment on the discussion forums, and you can also comment on the public issue trackers. So this is really an opportunity for you to get more involved in the development of the new standards before they're final. This all uh, has become um, the, the current practice for all JSRs over the last two years. And um, what we found, though, is we need to offer a little bit more encouragement to developers, a little bit more structure in terms of taking advantage of this openness. So some of the things that we're looking at doing in order to do this, enable broader participation in the JCP, make it easier for you, is an effort called jcp.next. And we've already completed a couple of the steps in the jcp.next um, effort that we started about four years ago in 2011, late 2011. Uh, our first step was to implement those transparency changes that I just talked about, so that's the current status quo. And we also merged our executive committee. And currently what we're working on are two initiatives. One is a little bit more complex and will be uh, taking a little bit more time since it involves uh, restructuring the intellectual property and the flow of IP through the uh, JCP and our membership agreement. Um, but the other one, which is JSR 364, is currently going on now, and that will be finalized this year. And it introduces new levels of membership. So if you'd like to take your membership the next level from an observer, we're going to be introducing uh, two new levels of membership. In addition to signing as a full member and signing the full JSPA, you'll be able to join as an individual developer and sign a simple one-page agreement to make you an associate member. And this membership will not require your employer's signature either. So it will be a simpler uh, way for you as an individual Java developer to participate in the JCP and contribute on JSRs. And we're also introducing a new membership agreement for Java user groups. So if your Java user group would like to join, again, it will be easier for you to join rather than joining <coughs> at, through a full 11-page document. We'll have a one-page agreement for you as a Java user group. So you can join the JCP and participate more fully. So that's coming. That'll be later in 2015. So um, just to give you an idea now of what you get when you participate in the JCP if you do decide to become a member. Um, as I mentioned, we're, we're changing these new agreements. So it will be easier to, for you to join as an individual, but you still can join as a corporation. So if you would like to have your employer join the JCP, they're not a member of the JCP yet, uh, some of the benefits that you can share with your employer are uh, influencing the technologies that drive your market, uh, savings, cost savings in terms of rather than developing everything yourself, um, take advantage of the standardization, offer um, growth opportunities for your developers in terms of giving them access to the newest technologies before they're even finalized, helping them to increase the size of their market, and giving them a competitive advantage in terms of being able to develop products that implement the new standards faster. If that's not something you're interested in joining as a corporation, as I mentioned, you still can join as an individual. So some of the things that you might get as an individual in terms of participating in the JCP and the standards process are acquiring knowledge from experts, um, getting real standards-based uh, um, experience with building specifications, in increasing your skills, and getting some professional visibility in the broader Java developer community, growing your network and your reputation. So you can participate this way as an individual, or you can participate as part of a team. Um, and we tend to see that Java developers who come together and work as a team get better results and um, are more positive, enthusiastic about the experience. So we do encourage you to work together with your Java user group members or with developers at your employer. And that brings me to adopt a JSR, which is if you decide as a Java user group you're interested in participating in JSRs and getting more involved in the standards development process, uh, we have a program called Adopt a JSR, which I asked you about earlier. 
And um, I know you haven't really gotten involved yet, but this is something for you to think about in terms of getting involved in this program as a Java user group and coming together and picking some areas of interest that you share commonly and feeding the, your um, thoughts and feedback into the spec leads who are driving the JSRs. So Adopted JSR is a JED-led initiative that was actually started by a couple of um, prominent Java user groups, the ones I mentioned earlier, London Java Community, and so Java in Brazil. So it's, it's led by the Java user groups, and they're working together with the JCP and with spec leads to contribute to JSRs as they're being developed in the JCP. <coughs> So a lot of the Java user groups that are participating in this program have found that it's a great way to receive attention from their local industry and become a little bit more organized and professional in their um, work as a Java user group and it also to attract more members and collaborate with other JUGs around the world. So when, since this program started about three years ago, we've had Java user groups from around the world. We've got about 30 Java user groups now contributing. So we often have gatherings where you can share together with the user groups in other parts of the world, all throughout South America, North America, Europe, Asia, um, and even Australia now. So we have almost every continent. Uh, Africa, yeah, we don't have Antarctica yet. so. Every other continent, we have Java user groups participating in this program, so it's a great way to learn from Java developers around the world. It's a little listing here, since we're running short on time, I'll share these with you if you're interested in which Java user groups are participating. I have a list there on slide 15. Uh, so really, um, the Java JSR program is a two-way street. It's about you um, feeding your comments to the spec leads of the JSRs, and it's about the spec leads working together with you to tell you what they would like you to work on. So one of the things that we try to do with the Adopt a JSR program is kind of facilitate those conversations. Uh, adopters have found that this has been a great way to um, gain some knowledge about the specifications. So the Java user groups that I showed earlier have found, all, realized all of these benefits that I mentioned earlier in terms of gaining knowledge and experience working with the specifications. As some of the things that you can do if you decide to participate in the Adopt a JSR program, I'll give you a couple of examples and use cases from the last couple of years. Um, oftentimes, uh, what the Java user groups have uh, decided to do is kind of shift at least some of their meetings from a speaker coming and sharing knowledge with you to a little bit more hands-on activities. So they've organized some hack days around JSRs that are being developed. Uh, so when some of the more popular ones for Java E7 were around the WebSocket API since that was a new technology. So some of the Java user groups decided to build some sample <coughs> applications off of the early access reference implementation and um, go ahead and organize a hack day with their Java user groups. So get together uh, with your local community and organize a day for you to go through and test the application and then feed your comments back into the public issue tracker. The particular one, the tic-tac-toe application that the Belgian jug did actually got included with the SDK for Java E7. Um, but uh, I know that all of the other sample applications that Java user groups did were also helpful, even if it didn't get, get ultimately included in the SDK, it was still really helpful to the spec leads and they appreciated that real world, real world feedback before they actually released their JSR and had the final release of the reference implementation to get that feedback. And similarly for Java SE8, um, numerous hack days were organized, particularly in London and Brazil, around the new date time API and also Lambda expressions. So those uh, two areas were particularly helpful in making Java SE8 one of the more, um, the, the most community con contributed platform to date. So we're looking to continue that with Java SE. SE9 and also with Java EE8. These are some examples of some of the things that Java user groups did over the last um, platform release. So um, I'll start talking a little bit now about what um, some of the new technologies that are coming and some of the JSRs that you could get involved in. I know um, the team that's working on Java EE wanted to get um, feedback from the community really early on, so they actually decided as part of Adopt the JSR to do a community survey early on to kind of inform the decisions that they made about which JSRs they would file. So that, that happened back in 2014. And many of the Java E8 JSRs have now been filed. So these are currently um, 
have formed their expert groups. So these are all, um, the ones with numbers are all candidates for you if you decide to adopt a JSR. Uh, so one of the things that Java user groups can do is kind of do a poll either on your meetup group or here in, in your introductory sessions, raise your hands which um, technologies you're interested in. I wouldn't recommend the platform JSR, obviously there's a platform JSR, but there's also some new component JSRs as well as um, revisions to existing component JSRs for Java EE. So those are, those are some thoughts for you, so I won't go through the whole list here. Um, but they kind of go numerically from 366 to 374 if you want to check those out and see um, which ones that you might be interested in. I know right now some of the more popular ones that Java user groups are interested in are MVC, um, the JSON binding, since that's also a new one, as well as um, the security JSR. So these are the possibilities for Java E8, kind of the, the things that they're um, aligning around, the themes for Java E8. So again, um, the goal here is to make it a community-driven platform. And some of the things that you could do now, since we aren't really at the point of having early access uh, reference implementations yet for these JSRs, is start to share some of your feedback on what you'd like to see for these uh, new um, technologies. Uh, you can also start to follow the expert group conversations since they've started already. And I know a few of the JSRs already have an early version of the specification on their um, sites. The CDI spec has um, several things up there as suggestions. And a lot of the other JSRs also are starting to put up suggestions of things that you can do if you're interested in participating. We also have Java SE9, so if Java EE isn't your platform of choice, uh, there will be some Java SE9 JSRs. As I mentioned, some of the Java user groups are more focused on Java EE, some are more focused on Java SE, and that's fine. That's really why you have a conversation in your user group to decide are the majority of you more focused on EE or more focused on SE. So it's fine either way. It's really a personal choice. So right now we have uh, JSR 376 for SE, um, many jumps kind of fall underneath the JSR, um, but one, this one particular JSR has already been followed, filed for Java SE 9. So that's the Java Platform Module System. We will have the Umbrella JSR coming soon and some other JSRs as well. Um, not every JSR that's developed through the JCP is part of a platform, so if you have a little bit more unique interest. Um, there's a few standalone JSRs that aren't targeted to be part of a platform right now that are in progress. Um, we can see new JSRs come all the time. I'm just giving you a snapshot of what's currently being developed through the JCP. So the Money and Currency API, um, that's currently in proposed final draft. Uh, so getting ready to be finalized, but that would be a good one to actually test at this point since it's pretty far along. Um, if you're interested in getting started right away, I would suggest that one as, as a good one to jump in and um, get some real world experience now before it's final. I think they're targeted to be final this year. And we have a new JSR that just got started um, that's a desktop, desktop embedded application API. And that one just got started. And um, so there aren't a lot of things that can be done with that one, but if that's a space you're interested in, that's one that you can keep an eye on in the future. So who here thinks they might be interested in getting started with Adopt a JSR, either on your own or in, your, in the user group? <laughs> I know Matt's here, and he's from the Detroit Jug, and he just got signed up and he started. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through all the steps if you're not you're not thinking you're not going to do it. But this is a resource for you if you want to go through it. The um, wiki page on Java.net. There's an Adopt a JSR project, and that has there how to get started or getting started with Adopt a JSR. So obviously, the first thing you do is join the project if you're interested, and then you would start to work with the spec leads of the JSRs after you've decided which JSRs you might be interested in. So that kind of walk you through uh, the steps that you would do. That's all on the Java.net wiki. There's also some resources for you in the Adopt a JSR organization on GitHub. 
So a lot of the hack days that the Java user groups organized for uh, EE and SE are available on the GitHub organization. It's called Adopt JSR. So if you wanted to um, take a look at some of those resources, they're available for you there. Uh, so really the idea here of what I've tried to share with you tonight is how we're making efforts in the JCP to put the community back into the JCP to reduce the barriers for you to participate in standards development and in uh, the reference implementations of those standards through open source projects that are available um, such as OpenJDK and Glassfish. And here are the resources. If you want to find out more, you can go to um, our JCP site. That's jcp.org. That's where you can find information on all of the JSRs that are currently being developed. And the second set of links is for Adopt a JSR if you're interested in that. So that would take you to um, a project page on java.net and you can find their links on how to get involved and some suggestions for you if you wanted to get started. Then, uh, conclude my presentation, and uh, do we have a, a couple minutes? We have a couple minutes questions? for questions. Sure. So, yeah. any questions? Questions about the JCP or JSRs or adopt JSR? <coughs> I've always been wondering about the JEPs that are going on in the uh, Open JDK and, and the uh -huh. JCP. Do they have to be ratified by the JCP before they become JEPs? Um, before they're JEPs, they start in OpenJDK, but then if they're going to become part of the platform, they need to be put into a JSR. So, for instance, like JSR 376, if you go to the um, jcp.org page and you enter 376 <laughs> and look at the description, they list, I think, four JEPs that make up that JSR. So some, some JEPs are, are actually just an implementation detail and don't, don't actually make it into the platform. So not every JEP is going to be a JSR. And it's not you know, a one-to-one -one relationship. Like I said, for example, if you use 376 as a use case, which I did that at a talk I did at Boston a couple months ago, um, just as a use case to show three, you know, that 376 has right now four JEPs that are targeted to be part of that JSR. But those stay. They're not going to fork OpenJDK and Java. No. So for for Java SE8, all if you look at the, I think there were there are four new JSRs that went into Java SE8, and each one of those had JEPs that made up that JSR. So the JCP part of it for the JSR is the specification, and then the implementation part of it is happening in the JEPs. So there aren't uh, there isn't a separate reference implementation for Java SE8 JSRs to be part of. The JCP, the spec lead for Java SE8 JS, the Java SE8 platform used OpenJDK as the reference implementation. So they didn't do a separate reference implementation for the JSR. They used OpenJDK as the reference implementation. Are you familiar with the CAP program, CAP? CAP. No. Okay. I'm just wondering how I belong to that. I'm wondering how. Okay. I, I think that might it. has something to do with uh, OpenJDK. No, no. I, no? I, excuse me. The CAP program, so you're getting early access builds of Java SE? Right, but... Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a very, very limited program. Okay. The, the, the rationale for it is people are, are worried about zero-day bugs and they want to get ahead of those. Uh -huh. But Oracle doesn't like to give people access to that because it's just a, it's a bad idea from a security standpoint. But is that what you're talking about, this CAP program? Yeah, I've been... Yeah. In, in it for, for one reason or another, I've been in it for a long time. So. You're, you're very lucky because there's lots of people who want to get on, and typically Oracle won't allow them to get in. Oh, okay. This conversation yeah. never happened. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Thank you. So you taught me something. something. The customers get early access builds to things like uh, security patches and stuff. Like yeah. Okay. And you know they're a little concerned about getting them out early for obvious reasons, sure. right? Okay. Somebody gets their hands on that becomes a zero-day bug, even though it's fixed, right? Yeah, okay. All right, any other questions? No? All right. Great, thank you, Heather. Thank you.